Hello, my friends, and welcome to Midweek Encourager. Uh, if you've got your Bible with you this morning, I hope you open to Isaiah chapter 61. We're going to read three verses there in just a moment. But I want to thank you for joining today. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to host you. It's a beautiful day here in Memphis, and looking forward to sharing with you from God's Word. Uh, the uh, June Hope is a women's teacher, uh, uh, speaker from Texas, and she she gave the basic outline for today's uh, for today's devotional, and I thought it was very very good for us. In Isaiah chapter sixty one, verses one through three, follow along with me in your copy of God's Word. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of our God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn, to provide all who mourn in Zion, uh, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, festive oil instead of mourning, and splendid clothes instead of despair. They shall be called righteous trees who have been planted by God to glorify him. Now you remember that, that Jesus went into the uh, tabernacle one, uh, one Saturday morning because they were they were following the Jewish law. And he read these verses and he, he proclaimed to the folks there in the synagogue that morning, today these verses are fulfilled in your ears. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about what these verses actually mean. This uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61 is a poem that God gave Isaiah to uh, to comfort, uh, to comfort the people of Israel, and to to really appreciate the power of this poem, it helps to remember a little bit of the general outline of the history of the Israelites. Several generations after the reigns of King David and King Solomon, the people of Israel fell into idolatry and sin. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed that the people of Israel would have their land destroyed, their cities burned, and the temple leveled. Wow, pretty, pretty harsh judgment coming from the mouth of God's man proclaiming and predicting God's judgment on the Jews. But, and soon enough, the Babylonian armies arrived on Jerusalem's doorstep, prepared to destroy the city, enslave its people, and exile them to foreign cities. Now, Isaiah is a fascinating book, and some people think that the, the most important thing, the most uh, the, uh, uh, remarkable thing about Isaiah was the amazingly accurate predictions that God gave Isaiah. Well, those are great. Those are great because when God gives a prophecy, when God gives a prediction, you know it's going to be right because he is God. He's the one who thought it up. He's the one who's going to bring it to pass. But maybe the most remarkable thing about the book of Isaiah is that Isaiah, even knowing the sufferings that were coming on his people, the hardships, the despairs that were about to descend on Israel, Isaiah's prophecy is still a prophecy of hope, a prophecy in, of encouragement to trust God, to seek God, to recognize that God's working. Now, the people of Israel were facing a dire future, one totally without joy. And without a doubt, the great suffering was on its way, and yet Isaiah still trusted God to bring hope, 
and heal pains. The prophet boldly and truly proclaimed that God seeks to comfort those who mourn. Isaiah didn't deny that the coming trial would be extreme, but even more extreme than the trials would be the comforts and the joys that God would bring after the suffering. Wow, what a God we serve. As the passage turns from grief to joy, from sorrow to hope, it reminds us of the, the complicated wealth of emotions that we feel when we lose a loved one. Now, some of you have lost a loved one this past week. Some of you, it may have been 40 years since that loved one died. We miss those folks. We miss them because we love them. And they were an integral part of our life. And so it's normal and natural for us in our humanity to miss people when they die and go on to, to Jesus. But we're also grateful for the treasured time that we had with them. However long, however short, we treasure that time. You know, when, when sorrow and joy meet together and they meld together, there's a striking beauty that God gives us, that God allows us to see. So today, if you're grieving over the loss of a loved one, regardless how soon, regardless how long, don't bottle up the grief that you feel, nor do you bottle up the joy that you feel and the gratitude that you feel by remembering the life of your loved one. We're happy that they've gone on to be with Jesus. We're happy that they're no longer suffering, but we're saddened by their loss. That's okay. That's part of being a human being. But don't bottle up the grief. Express it to God. Don't bottle up the joy and the gratitude. Express those to God as well. And then follow the example of Isaiah. Look to the future and the hope that we have, the confidence that we have, that we will once again see those loved ones. We will once again be in their presence and the presence of Jesus forever. We look forward to that future hope. We'll find hope in how we honor their memory. And we find hope toward our reunion with them in Jesus. So rejoice. God will turn your sorrow into hope if you'll do it God's way and trust him. May I pray with you? Oh, dear Father, thank you so much for your love for us and your care for us. Thank you for giving us people to love. Thank you for giving us people who have impacted our lives, who have molded our lives, people who have shaped our lives. And God, it's natural for us to miss those folks, whether they're parents or whether they're children, whether they're friends, whether they're a spouse. But God, don't let us be so sad that the Sora just eats us alive. But God, thank you that in Isaiah, God promised that he would turn our sorrow into joy, our mourning into laughter. God, let us follow your prescription. Let us follow your design for that mourning and that grief so that we can be like trees of righteousness that God himself has planted, then other people can see Jesus in our lives. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, listen, thanks for joining. Remember our, our uh, homecoming 
is not this Sunday, but the following on October 16. If you've not met, uh, not yet made your reservations for lunch, I hope you'll call the church office today. And we look forward to seeing you in person in church this week. I love you. Thank you for the privilege of being your pastor.